here we are a year out from you know Trump's presidency, and there is this this diaspora of investigations that are looking at the you know the range of things that you were laying out. You also have the two investigations in New York State that are looking at the Trump family businesses, and Trump forced to sort of defend himself in different ways on on all of these. The January 6th one taking up sort of the most attention, at least from the media, uh, the committee has put out, you know, seemingly every week for the past several months, these different subpoenas that that are targeting those closest to the president. In, in this case, it was Ivanka Trump. They have gone for, for all of those people, like Rudy Giuliani, the other lawyers that were advising Trump, those people who were counseling him in that period of time. And as the committee has said, its stated goal is to develop the most authoritative account of what happens in the lead up to and during the election. Ivanka Trump could really help the committee in understanding what was going on that day. What, what was going on that day? Why did it take so long for the National Guard to respond? Why did it take so long for Trump to respond? And, and, and had Trump stalled his response, uh, for, for what reasons? Was it because the insurrection was being so successful because it had indeed delayed the certification and, and had set off the chaos that it, it had done? That is a very important sort of black hole in the, in the information around what happens that day. There have been a lot of books and media accounts written about that. But, but to really get inside the room is what the committee is trying to do is like what is happening in the Oval Office and in that small annex off the Oval Office as the attack is going on on January yeah. 6th. And I'll tell you what, the, the timeline that's going to come out of all of this is really going to be devastating, Willie. By the way, I'm hearing from the Groucho March, Mark's desk, mm -hmm. word of the day, Michael Schmidt said it, he wins. Diaspora. Diaspora. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's a winning word that right there. That is when Roy Cerrone, the San Francisco treat, Michael, we're sending it your way after the show. Hey, Michael, let me ask you about the other big development out of the Supreme Court with regards to this, which is that uh, they rejected uh, executive privilege in this case for Donald Trump and that his records from that day and from his staff around January 6th would be made available to the January 6th committee. What are the implications of that? What specifically now will the committee have access to that it wouldn't had the Supreme Court ruled a different way? So there's a list of documents that has come out in the litigation here that sort of lays out all the different types of things that the committee could learn. And these are documents that include handwritten notes, drafts of declarations that the White House may have been putting together drafts of speeches and statements, uh, internal logs of who was meeting with who, who was doing what. Uh, to sort of give the, the internal picture inside of the White House of, of what was going on, email messages, uh, you know, other messages, you know, phone records, that, that sort of thing. Um, those could be very important documents to showing the anatomy of the White House's operation that day. Uh, the, the one thing that I've, I've often sort of cautioned in, you know, in talking to folks about those documents is that that assumes that this White House was operating in sort of a normal way, in a way that, you know, they were taking a lot of notes and that they were sort of keeping track of things. This was not a typical White House in, in that sense. This is certainly not a typical day. So I sometimes wonder how helpful those documents will be because because this this was just not a White House that that operated in a normal fashion. The president did not have a schedule um, on most days in the way that a normal White House would. The president would saunter down to the Oval Office sometime between 10 and you know 11 o'clock in the morning and sort of begin talking and begin his day. Um, so so. What, what has happened in, in this, this, this sort of legal standoff is that Trump was trying to stop all of these documents from going to the committee. Uh, there was a hope that his appointees on the Supreme Court would come to his defense. Right. They did not do that. Uh, they, the, the president has lost. The documents will now go to the committee. And the question will be uh, two things. What does the committee do with the documents? Do they simply hold on to them and use them as investigative leads um, and then maybe publish parts of them as they, they put out a report? Or mm -hmm. does the committee release sections of the documents uh, in, right. the coming, in the coming days? So, so that's what we're sort of waiting on.